All right, it's gonna be a video on building a frame for a bench swing out of wood. Uh, so here you can see the completed project I just finished. Um, basically everything except for the red swing I put together in this video. So if you like what you see, uh, you know, stick around for the rest and I'll go step by step on how to do everything. Uh, all the tools I used were a drill, level, I used a miter saw, some more drills, and a circular saw. So pretty easy to do by hand. All right, so hopefully you just saw a quick summary of my completed frame. Uh, so now we start building it. So this is kind of the general layout. Um, I spent a good bit of time kind of making the plans for it. That's what it's gonna look like. We've got some rough measurements already drawn out. So it'll be eight foot wide, eight foot tall. Just have the triangular base for support front and back and a couple of braces at the top. I think the funnest thing is gonna be these overlapping, uh, I forget what they're called, but these are gonna be like interlocking wood joints uh, where the posts and the beam intersect. And there's kind of just a sketch of what it's gonna look like. So I think the first thing I'm gonna start working on is uh, probably taking the notches out where uh, the beam is going to mount to the two legs. So yeah, the first thing I'm gonna start off with is the uh, the leg to beam joint, the top beam. And what I'm gonna do is basically I'm going to cut out a section here that's half the depth of this four x four. And then on this piece, I'm going to cut out a little notch here that's half the depth. And these are kind of going to lock together. This is going to sit on top of this one. I'm a kid. And uh, so, yeah, I'm most excited. I've never done that before. I've always wanted to. I think it's to make a really strong joint. So, basically, I'm, so first thing I'm going to do is basically just mark out uh, with pencil an area here uh, where this is going to be. And then I'll use my circular saw to cut a bunch of lines in here and then use my chisel to knock it all out. All right, so I got the uh, area marked. I'm gonna cut this out here, Hello. cut a matching section here. And the other important thing is to set your saw blade depth to, uh, to half the thickness of this. So you just wanna come down halfway. And so I've got my blade set at about one and three quarters uh, because this is three and a half. So one and three quarters is, um, half of three and a half and so now all i need to do is make sure i stay in between these lines cut it out and then clean it up with a chisel see if it works all right so there's the first notch I'm going to do the same on that piece, and then I'll flip that over, and it should hopefully sit in there. And then if you glue that and drive a couple screws through, it should be extremely strong. So, um, yep, let's repeat that on this piece over here. All right, so I got both my pieces cut, but I think I just barely cut them too small. They don't fit, so... Uh, I can see my pencil line here. So I'm gonna cut that a little bit wider. I can see my pencil line here too. So I'll cut that a little bit wider and then uh, hopefully they fit. All right, so I got it to fit. I don't know if you could see in the time lapse, but I uh, kind of screwed up cutting this one but they fit pretty good. Uh-oh, maybe too good. There it goes. Uh, I'm gonna try to cut this one wider. My saw slipped off of here and cut deep, deeper. This is actually the best place to cut a cut because I don't really need any extra strength on top. I just kind of, uh, cosmetic on top here so they didn't hurt anything uh, but I got smarter and, and made just a little bit wider cut on here and it fits pretty good nice and snug still so uh, that was a good first time doing that type of joint in my opinion so 
Uh, now I'm gonna do one on the other side, but one thing I'm gonna do is since this is kind of on the front facing beam of the beam, what I'm gonna do on the other side here is I'm going to flip it so that I take a notch out the back side. Um, I don't know if that's necessary or anything, but I just like that it's alternating. You know, it's on the back side on one side, or the other side, it'll be on the uh, opposite end of the bud board. So uh, I'll do that next. Okay, so I got both of those cut out. Uh, so um, then we're gonna wait to glue and screw those until later. Um, eventually, once it stands up, I'm gonna get a piece of two by four and kind of, you know, cut it and put one on the front and one on the back on each corner there to help stabilize it left and right. Um, but for now, next thing I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on the legs. Uh, on the bottom of the legs, building the triangular support for the feet, uh, so that has stability forwards and backwards. So, if you remember, this is what the legs are gonna look like. So, I'm gonna have a two by six, four foot long, along the bottom, and one on the outside, one on the inside, and in between, I'm gonna do a four by four triangular post. So, I'm gonna screw that into the vertical beam, and then screw the two by six on the outside and inside to kind of sandwich the vertical leg and these two triangular legs. It'll make sense once you see me build it. One important detail with everything on here is that all these triangular pieces are all drawn with 45 degree cuts. So I don't do any special angles. So I can use my, either my miter for probably the two by four stuff or use the, uh, you know, the speed square with the slanted edge and the circular saw to cut all my angles at 45 degrees. That'll make it easier. Okay, so here's the two feet, basically. Uh, again, two by sixes. And uh, these are gonna go on either side of the leg. The leg's gonna come vertically through here. And, uh, and I'm going to have a triangular piece of 4x4 four four post coming along here, kind of to this length. And then this will be, you know, screwed in on both sides. Um, these are about 4 feet long on the long side. And so you should be able to get two uh, out of a 8-foot board and have a little extra scrap left over. All right, so I've got one of the uh, legs up on the table. Um, again, this notch, this one's gonna be facing forward here. So I'm looking at the side of the post, which is very important because the uh, feet, uh, you wanna mount on the side of the post. So very important that we're on the side of it. What I've done is uh, measured this piece, which is four feet, which is good, I don't want it to be. I measured two feet in and drew a center line on it. I also drew a center line on the side of the post. And so now I can line this up with the center line. I even drew little marks one and three quarters out so I can line up the edges, which is perfect. So I think there's three things I'm trying to align here. I want this to be centered, this foot centered on the post. Um, I want the bottom to be flush. So the bottom of the foot and the bottom of the post should be flush. And the last thing I want this to be uh, 90 degrees to each other. So I've got my big T square here. And what I can do is run it on the side of the post and come down to the foot and make sure that that's, you know, as square as it can be there. A little tiny gap on the back side there, but do this on both sides. And once that's square, centered, and flush, um, I'm gonna put some glue on the back of this 
and drive some screws in it. So I'm using this Tight Bond 3 exterior waterproof glue. And uh, the longest screws I have right now are three inch, so I'm gonna use three inch. We got these six inch for later, but for this, I'm just gonna use three inch. Okay, so there's that. I've got two uh, screws in there. Um, when I do it on the opposite side, uh, instead of this top screw being on this half of the board, I'm gonna make sure that the other screw comes in through the, you know, for this other piece that goes on the back, comes on this side of the board, so that these screws, you know, aren't poking each other from both sides. So distribute the screws. Um, but yeah, besides that, I think I'm gonna do the other foot next. And then once I have both of the feet, then I'll get my last piece of four by four and uh, cut a 45 in it and then get it close to, you know, basically hold it up against here and then just draw a line on it so I can kind of cut it to fit this length instead of having to do the math. And I'll just kind of slide between this and the other uh, foot piece that's gonna be on the back. And then we'll be done with the legs. All right, so I'll basically screw three more of these on. One more on this leg and two on the other leg. All right, so I'm getting ready to do the uh, four by four piece that'll go from inside of here up uh, up against the side of, or the front of the leg. So again, it's gonna be this piece here. Uh, one thing I just realized though, I have it marked as two foot 10 on my sketch and I need four of them, two per leg. So two on this leg and two on the other leg. Uh, you can see them here, one, two, three, four. Um, but I only have one more piece of a four by four. I think originally I was planning to do six by six for the top instead of a four by four beam. So anyways, uh, so because of that, I don't feel like going to the store. Uh, I'm just gonna basically cut this eight foot long four by four into two foot sections so I can get four equal parts out of the one post I have left. And then um, I'm just gonna cut 45 miters on the ends and uh that's you know however long they are is is what i'm going to use to to put in these spots um i think one way to extend the length is to make sure that i alternate the miter cuts so you know if one's this way and the next one's that way then start my next one that way and the next one that one then like that anyways um you know don't just cut two foot sections and then it cut miters on him. I think I can make him a little bit longer if I alternate which way the miter goes for each piece, but I, I'll sketch it out and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so after a bunch of drawings and math that was all wrong and two sides of screwed up measurements, finally realized um, to get the most out of this post, these need to be 26 and a half inches long. So it's a long side from here to here, 26 and a half, and here to here, 26 and a half. That'll get you the most out of here. And just leave a little bit of a uh, cutoff on the end. So that's how long I'm gonna cut them. All right, so as you saw, my 10 inch miter saw does not cut through four by four posts on a miter. So I had to finish with the trusty old hand saw, but uh, here we go. I've got four brace pieces um, about the same length. So now I will fit them into here. So the idea is something like this. 
hopefully fits in between here. And you have to coerce it a little bit. basically making it flush again with the bottom over here wherever it lands there see I got it flush with the bottom there and so I'll probably um, add some glue here eh, I don't know if I can get glue in between these or not um, but I'll try to squeeze some in there drive a couple of screws in here and then I've got big six inch screws um, for this guy here. So I'll work on that next. Sorry, I didn't realize you couldn't see what I was doing up here, but uh, I basically used my hammer, put it in here and uh, pried these two boards apart so I could get glue on either side of here. And it kind of worked, kind of made a mess, but um, mostly when I'm really want us to have a nice flat surface here, that's my main objective. Um, and then secondary objective is to get this kind of flush with the bottom, which you can see it's pretty flush, but I'd rather that be extremely flat and this, you know, have a little gap or whatever. I think that's the most important thing. So now that that's there, I'm going to try to get my drill and make a pilot hole for my big six inch, uh, long screws that I got. All right, so here's these big screws I got. So I was planning to do something like that maybe. Uh, originally I was thinking to do two, but maybe I'll just do one kind of on the right side. And then uh, so that the piece that goes on the opposite side, I can also do on its right side so these screws don't intersect. These things are pretty heavy duty, so I think it'll probably be enough. To, why don't you try to drill a little pilot hole for this thing and then drive it in. So I want it to do something like that, I think. Like that. So. Okay, that hopefully gives me a direction for this thing to go. Let's see if it'll do it. Actually, I'm gonna do a couple of screws in here first so that when this drives in, it doesn't push it all that way. Um, so let me do that real quick. Put some screws in the top part there. So, I find my screws. Yeah. Again, going with the uh, three inch screws. And uh, let's do one here. So that'll keep that from moving at least. So before my battery dies for the night, let me try to drive this big guy in before my glue dries. If I swap batteries, if that helps. I'm trying to center this also.
All right, so there's a leg standing up. So yeah, in summary, I did end up doing uh, two screws on each side here, the bottom. Um, and then here at the last second, I just added another screw here. Not one of the big lag ones, but just kind of a smaller one. And uh, so you can see what I was talking about, how offset. I've got this one, the big six inch one going on this side and the other one going on the back side of the post. So they're not, you know, both in the middle and possibly intersecting. So, um, but I did add a small screw on both of these sides here just because. And that is a completed post. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other one and we'll be ready to uh, hang the beam. All right, so I got the second leg done. I got them spaced about how I want them. And I just can't resist uh, just kind of putting that top beam in just to see what it looks like real quick. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so just kind of got it loosely fit. And somehow everything is level. I thought it was gonna be crooked out here. I was gonna have to level the base, but you can see that the top beam is perfectly level somehow. I do have a couple of little scrap pieces under one side of this, so maybe I will end up doing some uh, some leveling under one of these posts, but uh, not much. So I guess I'll go ahead and uh, put some glue inside of those joints, hammer them in, and uh, put a couple of, I guess two and a half inch screws, maybe three inch screws in them. And uh, then I can work on the little triangular cross braces. I guess I realized you couldn't really see what I was doing. Uh, it's a little on the back side, but basically I just squeezed some glue in there and uh, started hammering that in. At first with just the hammer and it was leaving little hammer marks so i went and got a uh, little scrap piece of wood and held that up against and hammered against that instead so i want to put little marks in it and once i got it you know pretty much flush then i drove a couple of three inch screws and that really uh, brought it closed and now that is uh that's in there i guess one other thing i'll mention real quick that you should do is to make sure your posts aren't twisted uh you want to measure uh, the distance between there and there, the inside. And, uh, you know, make sure you have a similar distance on the front of your legs and on the back of your legs. So make sure that, you know, this back distance is the same as this front distance so that the legs aren't crooked like that. That makes sure everything's square there. And then, yeah, just take a level on your posts, take a level on the beam. And before I do my crossbars, I'm going to check for squareness, taking diagonal measurements, but uh, that'll, that'll get you close for this part. That one went in a lot easier without any hammering, uh, probably because I went and double checked my gaps and straightened these out, which I didn't for the first post. So uh, yeah, make sure you do that before you try to install your top beam. So now that it's up there, I'm gonna take uh, measurements from this corner down to this corner. And then that should be the same measurement as this corner to that corner. That tells me if it's square left and right. I'll also check my level on top. And once it's square, then I'll add my uh, little uh, triangular two by four pieces on the corners just to tighten everything up. All right, so I just took my uh, diagonal measurements. In this direction, it's 118 and 3 eighths. And in this direction, it's about 117 inches. So that means that this direction is shorter. This direction is longer. So I need to lean the whole thing over to the right a little bit to extend this length and shorten this length. So, um, yeah, so I'm just gonna try to extend a little bit and then put my cross braces in to where maybe they're both about 117 and a half. Uh, and then I'll put my triangular brace in and that'll keep it square from now on. And I triple checked all my other distances again from the front, front, from the back side to back side, 
here in the middle and there in the top just to make sure everything's square so last thing i need to do is just yeah bend it a little bit to the right and then put in my triangular brace to keep it square so still working on squaring it probably been doing this for 20 minutes now i think this is one of the most important steps um because you know this is how square it's going to look for the rest of its life once you put those braces in it's going to stay like that forever so take take your time here um one thing i thought to do was get a good straight piece of two by four i had uh extra for this project and laid it across the top of the feet and that way i can check if the feet are level and if the ground's level or not basically and so yeah i realized that the this side's a lot lower so i've got you can see a piece of wood under there to kind of shim it up to get it level and um that got everything else uh very level and it strained out my corner into corner measurements so the reason that uh this direction was shorter before is because the whole thing was kind of leaning over like that because the ground slopes a little bit so now that i got the ground even because i got the foot shimmed up on the bottom now everything's nice and square um i went ahead and cut my uh two by four uh same as i did the the four by four post into 26 inch long sections to kind of get the maximum out of one eight foot two by four with four pieces and so now that everything's square i'm going to go and screw that up in the corner front and back on each corner and then we will be done All right, there it is. So now I'm just gonna do the other three um, and then I'll be done with the frame. Then I can start thinking about hooks and chains and hanging the swing. Okay, so I went to Home Depot hoping to get one of those cool new uh, bearing swinging hooks, but they don't have any. They did have this porch swing chain kit, which hopefully has everything I need and will allow me to finish this today. So I bought that. You see it's got two main chains. Single chain comes down and then it splits uh, to go on the two, oops, two hooks there you see on each side. Then it also comes with the uh, hooks that screw into the uh, the wood beam it says it has a 500 pound working limit so it should be good for our entire family to swing on which is all we'll ever need so uh, we'll go ahead and do that really I think the only thing to figure out is uh, you know where I want to hang them you know the distance um, probably maybe a little bit wider than the swing you know, maybe three inches out either side or something like that. Um, centered on the beam. And then just need to drill a pilot hole. So just a little bit, you know, about the sides of the shaft here. Not as big as the threads, but inside of the threads. Screw these in and hang it all up. And then we should have a swing. All right, so I've got a quarter inch drill bit uh, for the hooks I'm using. Again, that's just a little bit uh, thinner than the... The, sh the shank of the screws that are going to go in so it's thinner than the uh than the screw um the hooks on my swing are going to be like 11 and a half inches from the ends coming in so i drew my line at eight inches in just said so it'd be a little bit wider and then i also so you can see there I drew a line at eight inches from the post and then i drew a center line one and three quarter inch uh, so I've got a little X on where to, uh, to drill. Can't tell if that's coming out or not. Yeah, there it is. So I'm just going to drill there and, um, put a little piece of tape on my drill bit to know how deep to go. I don't want to go much deeper than the threads on the hook. Uh, there's no reason to, to drill the hole any bigger than it has to be. So I'll just go until the depth hits that.
Okay, that was super annoying because it's in between these two pieces here. So I had to, as you could tell, do it piece by piece. No, I didn't use any of the cool TikTok hacks with the hook and drill and all that stuff. But anyways, um, I think it's good there. So I'll do the other one. I'm not going to record the other one. Just a tip, if you do the same thing I did, maybe don't use a wrench that has teeth on it because I kind of scratch up this hook a little bit. So maybe I'll get a crescent wrench with smooth jaws to do the other one. Okay, I had to run a Home Depot again to uh, get some of these because uh, the ends of the chains are closed loops and the hooks on my swing are closed. Uh, so it was either this or get some S hooks, but these were comparable in price and bigger working load. So I'm gonna use these to hook it up. Whatever you get, make sure you get something that's big enough to fit over your hooks. These wouldn't fit. Um, I caressed them and made them fit, but um, you know, just double check that when you're at the store. Maybe just get S hooks. Uh, that makes more sense.